Right, this pile of paper here is the result of doing over 1,000 A-level physics questions. So these are my work solutions. I actually printed them out on A3 paper when I came to make videos where I actually explained all of my answers. Um, and this is the result of doing 26 past paper videos recently. So what I did was I worked through the 2022 and 2023 exams for the three main exam boards in England. So that's uh, AQA, Edexcel and OCR Spec A, which I think covers about 90 to 95% of people in England doing A-level physics. Why haven't I done 2024? Well, these haven't been released yet into the public domain, uh, and so I haven't done the 2024 papers yet, although I've seen some of them, but I haven't actually worked through them. Why haven't I done EDUCAS or OCRB? Good question. Um, I just found that this has taken so much time that I've just not had enough time to do the other questions for the exam boards that not as many students take. However, I have learnt a huge amount. I mean, I've been pretty good at A-level physics, I've been teaching it for a while, but I would say that I know a lot more about A-level physics now than I did 12 months ago. And I think as well, this is something that I made the mistake of when I was teaching, was because I was so busy looking at specification and teaching the topics, I didn't actually spend enough time myself working through lots and lots of past paper questions to really identify the trends and actually look at the way that the exams are set up. So, what have I learned over the last few months? Well, first of all, you tend to remember the difficult questions, but you forget the easy ones. And that means when you look back at a paper, especially if there are some qu quite sort of challenging questions within it, you often feel that you did worse than you actually did. People remember the questions which they couldn't get, the ones they didn't understand, or the ones which they just didn't know that they were confident about uh, the approach to that question. And they're the questions that everybody remembers, they're the questions that people talk about when people come out of the exam. But actually, a lot of the questions looking through this massive stack of paper, a lot of them are relatively straightforward. And they kind of come up again and again and again. And ultimately, the more past papers you do, the more likely you are to see that there's actually a, a good amount of relatively straightforward questions, even in some of the more tricky papers that OCR did. The second thing that I've learnt is that it's pretty much impossible to predict what's going to come up in the papers this year. What I've noticed was that there are some very similar questions asked in 2022, and then a very similar question was asked in 2023 as well, which I guess means that if you've been working through the 23 and the 24 papers, you could still get similar questions that come up this year in 2025. So sometimes you have similar things coming up year after year, but there are also a huge number of questions that you just could not predict. I mean, I guess you know there's going to be questions about electrical circuits, you know there's going to be something with projectile motion, um, you know there's all these kind of sort of basic topics which come up again and again, but in terms of the actual scenarios and the context in which these questions are set, you are always going to get things which you have never come up beforehand. And the key thing to do then is just realise that if that question seems completely different to anything you've seen before, it's going to be completely different for everybody else. And you just need to kind of spend that time reading through the question, trying to work out what it's actually showing you. And I think something that I have seen are there are quite a few graphs, which I've never seen before, where they've got different things uh, plotted on the Y and the X axis to, to what you might have seen before. And again, it's just a case of reading the question, not assuming it's something that you might have seen. So, you know, double checking what is on the X axis, looking at the units, and then looking for clues in the question about what things mean. You know, what does a gradient represent? Uh, what does the intercept for that particular data mean? And they're the kind of things that it's really hard to prepare for specifically, but ultimately the more questions you've seen, the more comfortable you're going to be going into the unknown and realizing that there's gonna be some tricky and interesting and different things that come up. When it comes to the multiple choice questions, the things I've found are that you still need to show you're working out. If you write down the equation, you put in your numbers, and you go through the normal procedure, even though you're not being marked on that, it's going to stop you making silly mistakes. If it's a calculation kind of multiple choice question, what I tend to do is look at the question, try and answer it, and it's only then that I look at the possible answers, so I'm not distracted by them beforehand. 
Sometimes uh, there are questions where you need to pick maybe uh, the incorrect statement or you need to look at maybe three statements and decide which of those are correct. Um, again, for that, I think just use a pencil, just simply cross through uh, the statements that you know are incorrect and that's going to whittle down the answers to what could be the right one. But apart from that, um, the people who do really well in the multiple choice section are the ones who tend to do well across the whole paper because a lot of the time it's just your good standard physics knowledge which is being assessed. Although it's a different style of question, the people who are going to get more marks in the multiple choice questions are the ones who just have a better understanding of the physics. And also, you've got to realise that some of the questions are going to take too long for you to do initially. And I would say if you see a question and you think it's going to take you more than a couple of minutes in the multiple choice section, leave it, move on, and then come back to it later in the paper. What I learned when I did a lot of the six markers was that, first of all, they all seem quite daunting when you open that page and you just see a whole page for you to write your answer in. However, at A level, a six marker is often broken up in the question into a couple of different things that they're wanting you to answer. So even though it's a six mark question, think of it as a three mark question, which isn't so daunting, and then another three mark question. And also, don't feel that you have to just write and fill up every single answer line in the paper. A lot of the time, you can include diagrams, you can include equations and maybe a calculation, and also you can have a graph with the way that you might expect data to be. So just because it's a six mark question, it doesn't all have to be just this long, uh, massive paragraph. Break it up into diagrams, break it up into bullet points, and that's going to really help when it comes to these six mark questions. And really, I guess the other thing I learned was that, um, you know, past papers just take a long time to do. And there's no getting around it that if you want to do well in exams, the more past papers you can do, the better. And I would say start doing past papers now. And that's going to help you identify the topics that you're not so confident about. So that means you can then go back to your notes, back to other questions, back to other videos and things that I've made to help you with that. Um, also, the thing that I think is going to be the difference uh, that can really get you more marks and kind of help you go up, go up a grade boundary in the exam is to really actually think about when you're marking your paper, writing in the corrections, about looking at the examiner report to see the things that they were expecting to see uh, and the kind of the hints and tips from the examiners about how to get more marks and what students should be doing differently in the future. And also making sure that you actually record that information somewhere, maybe put it into a folder and that means you can then go back and relook at some of the old past papers you've done to try and identify maybe where you made mistakes and also which things you can improve on as you do more past papers. Anyway, if you want to see these past paper videos I've done, they're all over at alevelphysicsonline.com. There's a past paper finder. You can select your exam board, the paper you want, the year, or you can just look at all of my work solutions and maybe have a look at some of the other exam board questions because a lot of the physics is going to be identical. And of course, if you go there, you can also see videos and then you can just skip forward to the question that you need more help with. So hopefully that's going to help you as you prepare for your exams.